Imagine if he fucking microneedled too. This guy would be fucking Jafar, bro. One year of not using minoxidil. 2021. Boom. Two years after stopping minoxidil. Two years after stopping. He has not used it for two years. And this is what he was dealing with before. Like, this is baffling, bro. What's up guys, Derek, moreplaceworldaids.com. Today, we're doing another beard video because of Derek's recent video on Minox. Here are the results of Minoxidil and two years after stopping it, it's permanent. So if you haven't seen my previous videos on beard growth, I did the uh, designing a beard growth protocol for KSI. Um, he reacted to it, I did a follow-up to it. We had this one here. Um, we also had permanent beard gains being gained using minoxidil only, I believe, at the time. This is how to double your minoxidil results, including, but not limited to just microneedling, but as well as implementing tretinoin for enhancing cell wall transferase enzyme activity. Also, minoxidil allowing him to usurp his father, finally, in beard quality. This individual going from shitty, sparse nothingness to Keemstar Bilzerian status and a half, and finally usurping his father, as we all want to do with our beards i guess now again also this individual six month transformation and he uh um, posted on the subreddit so again i haven't even fucking done the protocol myself but i know it's very very effective from all of the anecdotes over the years um all the before and afters that are quite dramatic and it's something i'm considering doing myself but i'm just being cognizant of the fact that if i ever want to go back to like stubble slash like clean shape. And once this shit's permanent, like you're making it so that it's going to be a lot more of a fucking problem to shave off in the future because you're otherwise inducing permanent changes to your beard. Like it's otherwise going to become much thicker and denser when you do this thing. So be aware of that. It is indeed permanent. That's what we're getting into what we're getting into now with another before and after because of Derek's recent video on Minoxidil. Here's the result of minoxidil, two years after stopping. It's permanent. December 8, 2018, no minoxidil, one month growth. The guy barely has a mustache. He's got a bit of a, what is this, a soul patch? He's got like a fucking one hair popping out. And that's it. So, you know, obviously not working with much. Like a month is a pretty fucking long time to get nothing. Now, it keep, a lot of people are getting, like I'm not just saying you go from like this to like a good beard and you need some sort of baseline, like, no, you can literally go from like a baby faced motherfucker to having a full beard with this stuff. On Minoxidil month 12, eight months of growth, December, 2019. Looking pretty, pretty hefty, bro. One year of not using Minoxidil, February, 2021. So again, this is, he didn't even microneedle as far as, far as I know. This is just Minoxidil. Imagine if he fucking microneedled too. This guy would be fucking Jafar, bro. One year of not using Minoxidil, 2021. Boom, two years after stopping Minoxidil. Two years after stopping. He has not used it for two years. And this is what he was dealing with before. Like, this is baffling, bro. This is a before and after if I've ever seen one. And he didn't even do everything. He could have done the full gamut of microneedling, uh, tretinoin, castor oil potentially if he wanted to go full board. Lots of different things he could have been doing that he didn't even do. Oh wait, here we go. Here we go. He did the full board thing. I'm, of course, have, why would I have expected otherwise? Because these results were fucking insane. Use Kirkland 5% topical two times one milliliter per day. Standard. Castor oil, four hours after applying minoxidil, derma rolled with bad derma roller. Roughly 300 needles grouping 0.5 millimeters, maybe 10 times in a year. Okay, well, that's not very frequently. So obviously he could have been doing that more frequently, but evidently didn't need to. Biotin daily, 10,000. Zinc, other vitamins and minerals packed in one pack. Side, okay, like a multivitamin. So yeah, he didn't do the tretinoin. He didn't really microneedle that aggressively or that frequently. He just did it a little bit, but the main mover, name, the fucking can't even talk. The main needle mover is the 5% minoxidil twice a day. So if he was doing 0.5 millimeters more frequently, plus using tretinoin perhaps, you know, obviously the results would have been more dramatic. However, obviously, like, where do you draw the line? Like, this is pretty fucking solid, you know? Like, you don't need to do the full board protocol to get the results you want. And that just goes to show how efficacious this thing really is at blowing shit up, bro. Like, this is 
this is a night and day difference. Um, let's see. My man, you give me hope. I had some that I started using six months ago, only used for about a month and a half, got lazy, forgot to finish the six month supply I bought. Might have to finish the lot off and see how it goes. What was your age at the start? I was 24. My man, you give me hope. Oh, is this the same fucking thing? <laughs> Definitely do it, man. On week six with good lighting, I started seeing small, first small hairs on my cheeks. Before that, there were zero. Good rule with Minoxidil is it's a marathon on a sprint, so keep at it. it. Takes only a few minutes of your day away, but will benefit you for the rest of your life. My life has completely changed since I have a beard. How has your life changed? Now he has a beard. <laughs> Ah, yeah, women, apparently they like men with full beards and not men with baby face. I went from four matches in a few months on Tinder to 99 plus in two weeks. Jesus, fuck. And I got a lot more confidence now, like a lot. Overall, feeling better in my own body. Good to know. Yeah, like for him, he went from like fucking nothing to like Jason Momoa, bro. Like that's night and day. Um, let's see. Hey man, amazing result. But where can you get the items listed from? How the fuck are you in the more plates more night subreddit? <laughs> you don't know the answer to this question. Thank you so much. I can get castor oil from Amazon. For curriculum, I went to online pharmacy and ordered from there. You don't even need to go to online pharmacy. Biotin, also from Amazon. SciTech Nutrition Daily One and Zinc from on official online retailer. If you want 10% minoxidil, you can get it from online site in Netherlands and get it shipped. He's using 5% curriculum. It's not like this is some special shit. Weird. Let's see. Oral castor oil or apply it onto the beard once a day. Apply it four hours after applying minoxidil two times per day. So yeah, obviously... You know, topical seems to have some promise. However, obviously oral, far more potent. Do I recommend doing it necessarily? Not really. It's just another thing to add to the stack if you wanted to go nuclear. However, the needle mover is the minoxidil and the microneedling. Above and beyond that, everything is icing on the cake or perhaps if you add lack of sulfotransferase enzyme activity, maybe the tretinoin becomes a bit more necessary. But ultimately, most people are going to get along just fine and end up with a fucking huge beard, a good beard, with the minoxidil and microneedling. Unlike hairs on the scalp, facial hair isn't sensitive to hair loss due to androgens. This is what makes boosting hair growth down there even more rewarding. True that. It's amazing. Down there, facial hair. If this is true, then I'm about to give up on my scalp and just grow a minox beard. LOL. Does minox work on the scalp? <laughs> like, what? Huh. No, bro. What do you mean? What do you mean? You're on the fucking more plates more dates subreddit. Does minoxidil work on the scalp? It was only fucking designed for that, bro. Well, I guess technically, if you go as far back, it was designed for oral ingestion for fucking blood pressure modulation. But I mean, yeah, the fucking topical formulation is to put on your head. Yeah. Amazing results. Thank you so much. I use minoxidil for bread as well. <laughs> Minoxidil bread, the best kind. Make a fucking grilled cheese. I have nowhere near your results. Do you derma roll as well? I derma rolled maybe 10 times in the year, but I think correct derma rolling would make a huge difference and made, made my beard thicker and fuller. Just keep going. You will make it look at 10% minoxidil as well. So yeah, if you don't respond to 5% with microneedling, with castor, with fucking tretinoin, maybe look at the depth of your derma rolling, first of all, as well as perhaps, you know, higher concentration minoxidil, but the likelihood you need to exceed 5% Highly unlikely. And at that point, you're getting into compounding pharmacy or like illegal online pharmacy <laughs> territory for get procuring the solutions. Like you should be fine with 5%. And if you need a compounded tretinoin and minoxidil solution, that's where you would go through somewhere like Merrick Health, talk to one of our physicians and see if you qualify for a prescription. How do you continue to derma roll through the thick beard? With great care, that derma roller tugs on some of my beard hair sometimes, it hurts. Yeah, this is exactly why too, you don't want a roller like I talk a lot about the efficiency of the microneedling device, the Derminator 2. I talk about saving time, how it goes in and out way quicker so you can get the job done faster. There's less overall pain because you're fucking slicing and dicing like super quick straight in and out with like uh, actual mechanically engineered fucking thing that's like rapid fire and it gets the exact depth you need rather than a roller. You have to control the pressure and speed. And if you're in physical pain and you're just like a hand, like how fast can you go ultimately at the end of the day? Like it's way less efficient, way more painful overall, and you might tear your skin depending on if the going in at an angle actually matters. Because again, a roller is going in and out at an angle. It's not going straight in and out like a microneedling device is designed to do. But again, when you're going through your scalp, if you have long hair, you know as well as I do, the roller catches and pulls hairs out of your scalp and it fucking sucks. So if you have a thick beard, I hadn't even thought of that, bro. But if you have a thick beard like this guy, 
trying to micro needle with a fucking roller, you're gonna be catching and pulling the shit out of stuff. So that's where a micro needling device like the Germinator 2 is even more critical in my opinion. Do you need it? No, you can get the job done with a roller. It's just gonna be a way more fucking annoying experience. It's gonna be more painful, more time inefficient, and down the line, perhaps less cost efficient when you're replacing rollers rather than just cartridges. But again, keep in mind for beard, you can stop the microneedle and minoxidil and keep your gains. Whereas on your scalp, you can't. This is why having a device becomes more prudent when you're doing your scalp. If you're using your, just doing your face, maybe you get away with a roller, you know? But if you're doing your scalp, it's a very, very recommended investment to get a device, in my opinion. Thanks for the info. Perhaps I should find a higher serum concentration and apply that roll for a bonus effect. Yes, that would help a lot. I tried 10% for a month, made good difference, and it smelled so nice. Used two gain brand. Okay, I got the fall again 5% after looking at the ingredients. Blah, blah, blah. I got some derma roller gains a while back. Never tried Minox as I'm not disciplined or caring enough. I cruise on tests for the last year, which is slowly filled in regardless. I can tell you right now, even though androgens are what like largely facilitate body hair growth and everything as you are going through puberty, Minoxidil will blow the fuck out of exogenous steroids out of the water for facial hair growth. You might think in your head if you've never used gear, like, oh, you know, put in 10 times the dose of how much test I produce. Obviously, I get a huge beard. No, dude. Minoxidil will blow that out of the fucking water. You can apply literal DHT to your goddamn face, and I promise you Minoxidil will shit on it for how much hair you grow. Um, I cruise on tests for the last year, which is slowly filled in regardless. I'm hoping I can get a bit more gains as I'm not far off from yours, and yours looks quite good. Man, test has so much benefits. I'm a hop on after a while. Uh, but, but, but is there anything else in here that's worthwhile? What's a good derma roller? Can be used on the scalp, right? Yes, it can be used on the scalp as well. A good derma roller should be 0.5 millimeters with 192 needles made from titanium. They don't scratch the face then. If it is more than 192, they are probably going to scratch your face. I used one with around 360, I think, but only maybe 10 times. It wasn't really good. Uh, but, but, but holy shit, dude, you have a sick beard. Thank you so much, man. It means a lot. Bro, how long it take you and how often did you administer? I just read that like it was grammatically incorrect and it's not. How long did you take it for and how often did you administer? I used it for one year and then on and off for two months. I used one milliliter two times per day in the morning and a few hours before sleep. Don't give me hope. Fucking cringe face. I shall give you hope. This guy apparently has been deemed a clown on the subreddit, but he also has an achievement for top karma, prolific commenter, and avid voter. These look like, like Halo badges or some shit. Or like Call of Duty, like Prestige. Fucking nostalgia, bro. Fucking legit, dude. Awesome beard. Thanks so much. All right. Is there any risk to this? So like, will my head hair be at high risk of thinning or something? Your head hair might get better, in fact. I had a shedding phase for two to three weeks where my scalp hair started falling out like a lot, but it lasted for a short while, then it was okay. It does that because Minox resets your hair growth clock on all hairs on your body and speeds up the next shedding phase so the new growth can begin. Yeah, so like... You may induce a shed on your head despite the fact that you're applying it to your face. So definitely keep that in mind if you're not ready for the, uh, what's it called, the dread shed. You gotta be mentally prepared for that one, dude. Because once you apply this shit, it's kind of wild that wherever you fucking apply the shit, whether it's up there or down here, you're gonna get a fucking shed probably. But it's not necessarily a bad thing when it's making room for better improved growth at the end of the day. But, um, you know, definitely worthwhile to mention. And um, yeah. As far as, uh, you know, side effects go, I did have somebody in one of my last microneedling videos mention, like, why don't you mention side effects? You know, there's like heart palpitations can happen and blah, blah, blah. Like, if you have not seen my minoxidil side effect videos, they're fucking there, dude. Uh, minoxidil side effects and no one will tell you about. What is the chance of this happening? Pretty fucking low. What are the like, what's the likelihood of like heart palpitations or heightened resting heart rates? Um, not as low as you'd think, bro. It's actually one of the more side effect ridden hair loss prevention drugs, in my opinion. Do I think that it's going to be so problematic that you won't be able to use it or that it will be like, like significantly impacting your quality of life or health or anything like that? Probably not. You know, it's very well tolerated. It's FDA approved. It's used by fucking millions of people. It's one of the most tried and true cosmetic related drugs in the entire planet. So again, just be aware that you may end up with some cardiovascular aberrations that are worthwhile to keep note of. And if you end up with palpitations, then definitely get off this shit. And fortunately, it will be out of your system within relatively short order and you should be back to normal. However, there's definitely a risk of some of this shit and it's definitely worthwhile noting, especially if you're micro needling for enhanced absorption. So 
Definitely keep that in mind. It's not a side effect free drug. No drugs are side effect free. You may be an individual who responds great with no side effects, or you may be an individual and the likelihood is high that you will be just fine and have no issues whatsoever. But there is a chance that you might have some cardiovascular aberrations. You may have um, one of the side effects some people report is like, you know, dark bags under their eyes after prolonged use. Now, fortunately for the facial hair thing, you have to keep in mind, this is not lifelong commitment. This is something you can get in and out like within a year or even six months, perhaps. Like, I don't know, like it seems like some guys are getting pretty fucking quick gains and then getting off and keeping their gains for years thereafter. So if you end up with side effects, like, you know, it's making you more bloated from water retention, because that's a side effect um, that is definitely common. And it's, you know, very, very prevalent, I think. You know, like even when I used minoxidil years ago, very short term, mind you, uh, we never stuck with it long term. I basically induced the shed, got significant water retention, and then came off because I didn't like the water retention. And that was one of the reasons I avoided the drug entirely. But a lot of people don't get that, but some people, they do get that. And you notice it quick, you get off. And then once it's out of your system, it's fucking out of your system and you no longer have the water retention issues. However, with this, just keep in mind that with the beard, you are only exposing yourself to it until you've achieved your ideal growth and then you're off and you retain the gains. Whereas for your scalp, it's a bit more understanding why you wouldn't want to expose yourself to this lifelong if you had side effects. I'm not suggesting you endure cardiovascular side effects. I'm saying if you endure perhaps cosmetically displeasing water retention in the short term to achieve a lifelong beard, you know, weigh out that pro and con in your own head and you decide, I guess. But the thing to note is the fact that these are permanent results as evidenced by just another anecdote, you know, on the More Plates More Dates subreddit. A lot of individuals have had great success with this uh, system that we've kind of put in place here and kind of made, you know, however many videos about it at this point. All this knowledge, you know, passed down the grapevine over the years and individuals are transforming their lives because of it. And it's fucking awesome to see. This guy went from a baby-faced motherfucker to literally Momoa in a matter of, fuck, eight months, I guess. Or a minoxidil, month 12, eight months of growing, December 2019. So about a year. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely a worthwhile endeavor for many individuals, I think. And it's a very, very promising intervention that I think uh, a lot of people are going to greatly benefit from. And just be mindful of the potential side effects. But this is kind of what could be expected. And it's fucking crazy. So anyways, my recommended minoxidil. Again, it's not the most cost efficient one, but it helps support me. So if you want to support my channel... The information I'm providing, actually, you know, discussing this stuff to begin with, as well as getting a non-greasy, fast-drying minoxidil preparation. Like, this is the highest quality minoxidil you can get. Check out my recommended minoxidil linked in the description below, as well as, if I can remember, I'll put up a pinned comment with the fast-drying, non-greasy minoxidil. Like, ultimately, you can get the cost-effective one off Amazon or Costco or whatever, but it's really greasy. It doesn't dry as quick and it's just lower quality in general due to the excessive amounts of propylene glycol. Um, it's just not prepared as well, hence the price difference. And for me, it's worthwhile to get the non-greasy one personally, especially if this is going in your scalp hair. Or alternatively, you could do like one dose at nighttime with the greasy like Kirkland shit and like, you know, you wash it out in the morning and then you put on your fast drying non-greasy one, you know, with the stuff that's linked from my channel in the morning when you're about to go out or you do you know one or the other it doesn't really matter like ultimately you decide but they both have the same active ingredient they're just as potent as one another it's just one is prepared um, in a solution that is less greasy and faster drying and supports me versus the other one cost efficient but no hard feelings whichever one you end up getting as well the micro needling device i recommend helps support me and it's easily the most efficient and high quality device on the market in my opinion for getting this shit done fast with the least pain possible, the most highest quality like stringency to the actual depth you're trying to get. Uh, won't catch your fucking hairs and rip them out of your face like it would if you had a roller. That I will link as well. But again, the more cost efficient version, you could easily just get a roller off Amazon for like 10 to 15 bucks and it'll still get the job done it's just annoying as shit to use in my opinion. And ultimately using the Derminator too, you know, helps support me. And if you're gonna be using this on your scalp, I like above and beyond anything with, you know, supporting me versus, you know, going the cost efficient or like I actually genuinely recommend getting a device if you're gonna be using it on your scalp lifelong. If you're just doing it on your beard though, short term thing, you know, and you're on a strict budget, you know, roller 
is cool too. Anything else that is uh, relevant, um, if you're gonna be looking at compounded minoxidil preparation through a pharmacy, check out Merrick Health, linked in the description below, as well as the uh, pinned comment, if I remember to put it there. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, it will be down there, help support me. And um, I guess that's it for the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, if anybody is, uh, you know, I think we've had a decent amount of anecdotes in the last video from people who've had good experiences. So it's cool though, bringing this kind of shit to light because a lot of people just have no idea this is even possible. And it's really, really cool to be, have the platform to like put out this information in like, I don't know, to the masses, I guess. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Please comment, helps the algorithm. It's much appreciated when you guys do. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Like I mentioned, the fast drying, non greasy minoxidil. Also, the recommended hair loss prevention ketoconazole shampoo. I'll put the link in the same, it's like a combo deal. And if you care about hair loss, it's easy to just get them both at the same time. Um, with a discounted rate for getting the combination, a microneedling device, uh, pharma grade hair loss meds, um, and anything else I'm associated with, it'll be all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.